After Sandy Hook, and maybe more than ever, we are hearing more about and thinking more about mental health issues and the effect they can have on families and communities. Part of the conversation is about words. The Institute of Living at Hartford Hospital has a new mental health awareness campaign looking to change the names that we call each other and the words that we use every day. The hospital's chief psychiatrist, Dr. Harold Schwartz, is here to talk about the Stop the Stigma campaign and about mental health awareness after Sandy Hook in general. Dr. Schwartz, thanks for being here. Um, I wanted to talk about, uh, you sit on the the Newtown Commission, yes. um, and it recently came out that uh, Adam Lance's father was willing to be cooperative in, in your efforts to look at the ways that the mental health system helped his son or did not help his son. Um, and it, I read that you're also looking for more access to Adam's records, med medical records. That's right. What, what sorts of information do you want to get from, or do you hope to get from that? Well, we hope to come away understanding as much as we can about Adam Lanza's mental state. That would mean any mental conditions that he was uh, assessed for, uh, diagnosed with, and treated for over, over the years. Um, we don't know the relevance of this to, to what actually happened, but without knowing what's in the records, we really can't advance our understanding of how this particular incident happened. The question that so many people have in lots of different forums, I mean political, uh, when we're talking about gun rights, mental health, uh, access and all that, is is it possible um, to predict when someone is at risk of doing something like this or um, may do something like this? I would say that predictions of violence uh, are should mostly be considered an art slightly influenced by medical science. Uh, it's very, very difficult uh, to make predictions, but that's all the more reason why whenever something like this happens, we have to learn as much as we can about it. Was there something missed? Was there anything that could have been done? Were there opportunities um, and things that just fell into the cracks? We can't know unless we look and you know, maybe over time our capacity to predict will improve. And, and I would guess that we, it's not that we want to necessarily, the emphasis should be more on not predicting who's at the brink of doing this, but preventing that person, I guess, from getting to that brink. Oh, sure. Uh, you know, the whole focus now has turned really to prevention, early intervention as, as part of this national dialogue on mental health that we're having. And, and I think that's great. I think it's great for helping people um, who need, need care. Um, a, a direct connection can't be made right. between that and really reducing the risk that these kinds of things can happen but incrementally we, we can hope and in the meantime we can increase access to care that you know for most of history right up to this time really has been inadequate. Over the past year when you've been on this commission I mean what have you learned about Connecticut's system? Is, is it pretty good? Are there big gaps in it? Or? Well I think the mental health system in Connecticut, the public mental health system in Connecticut is actually superior. It's far better than many other states. That being said I think that you know mental health care everywhere um, is underfunded given the vastness of the problem. I mean after all one in four Americans Americans suffer from a mental disorder. Uh, mental disorders stand up alongside cancer and heart disease and the other really major killers, but they don't get the kind of attention, or at least they certainly haven't, you know, up to now. And they certainly aren't funded the way that uh, other disorders are funded. And part of that you, is attributed to the stigma that's related to it, or? I, I think the stigma that's, that uh, attaches to mental health has a very big role in our attitude towards how much attention we're going to pay to it, mm -hmm. towards how much we will pay for mental health treatments. And uh, stigma is um, debilitating both to our systems of care, but also to the individuals who suffer from mental illness themselves. We're looking at some video now of, of the campaign um, and some of the literature that's, that's coming out about it. And let's talk about it because it has to do with um, words. You know, we all grew up saying you know, sticks and stones will hurt my bones, words will never hurt me, but, or names will never hurt me, but they, they do hurt. Words do hurt. So words like sacko, uh, psycho and wacko, even even crazy, are hurtful to the people who carry, uh, carry mental disorders. We're bringing our attention to that because it's so obvious. You know, you, you hear on the radio from a traffic report, wow, this traffic is really psycho. Well, what about the people out there who are, who are damaged by the use of that kind of language? So we 
we've started this campaign, um, and we are asking people to participate by going to our um, website, which is stopthestigmact.org, and signing a pledge. And that pledge asks people to really pay attention to this issue, to, to not allow people to suffer from this discrimination. In fact, to stand up against it, to speak out about your own story uh, about mental illness or stories of your loved ones and encourage people who have mental disorder to feel free to come out with their own stories. Ultimately, to simply not stand for the kind of discrimination which really is the end point of this kind of stigma. And that it will take a lot of courage on behalf of um, people in this country to to take that step and, and be so open about it. It takes courage, but I've heard people do it. Heard someone do it last night at a, at a town hall meeting. We're hearing people doing it increasingly. This is the time. Yeah. You know, we've got a momentum going right now mm -hmm. in this discussion, the national dialogue on mental health, that is something like, that I have never seen in my lifetime. And so come forward, say it, and, and, and dare others to discriminate against you because of it. And, and as for the words, you know, even here in the newsroom we've been talking about, it's remarkable how when you stop to think about it, how often you do use words like that. Like, this is crazy weather. This is, you know, um, and if you were to mark down every day how often you said that, I think people would be amazed themselves. I think that's true. And you have to really pull back. I mean, part of us says, well, this is just in the vernacular. It's, yeah, it's how yeah. we speak. But until you pull back and you look at other words we've used in the past for other groups, mm -hmm. that once we start paying attention, we realize how damaging it is. Hopefully, a few years down the road, we'll have that same attitude about some of these words. And uh, there's a big uh, gala coming up uh, next weekend. The Black and Red Gala at Hartford Hospital's annual event, which is um, recognizing behavioral health. That in itself um, is a, a very big step forward to have this kind of emphasis um, be placed on the value of mental health services um, in a hospital or in a health system. And it, it's another way of saying we're not going to tolerate this stigma anymore. Yeah, you said, I mean, this is really um, a wave that you have not seen in, in your career. I have not seen it. I'm encouraged by it. I hope that we continue with it. Um, I've been skeptical, but I'm actually, as, as, as it builds momentum, this, this discussion, I'm becoming more encouraged that um, this may really have some legs and we may really see a much greater focus on mental health issues, not just this month and not just this year, but going forward in time. Well, and we'll have to have um, experts such as yourself to cooperate and participate in the conversation. I, you know, there's going to be another conversation at the Capitol, and uh, not only in Connecticut, but uh, in the nation's capital. About about gun laws and people are always saying well you know we need to have more focus on mental health well and it's hard to know well what does that mean well like what what kind of a focus specifically what do people want it is it is very hard it's hard to focus on mental health without there being some you know sort of a taint uh, to, to say that well that that, that means that it's really a problem with the mentally ill that we have this kind of right. violence. And I think we, we have to say that access to weapons remains um, the single most powerful element um, in, the, in the causation of violence in, in America. There's no question. But that issue aside, and I, you know, I know that uh, many people uh, take, have objections to that you know, argument, that it's nevertheless the case. But putting it aside, we still have to consider consider um, the possible role of mental illness and, and do what we can, look at it, examine it, and, um, and use the emphasis to focus on mental health, mental illness for everybody. Right. Right. All right, a great conversation. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Well, don't forget, if you missed something here on The Real Story, you can now watch it online by going to foxct.com. Thanks so much for watching this week's edition of The Real Story. Al and I will be here again next week.